Hello and welcome back to The Cock Dice. In this week's conversion video, I'm tackling the White Scars chapter. More specifically, an assault intercessor for this Mongol-themed horde. Let's take a look at the bits we're going to need for tonight. Okay, so obviously I've got an assault intercessor body, uh, arms, I'll be using pretty much all of them for tonight's conversion. Uh, I've added this sword. I'm going to add it as a sword. It's a spear from the Cypher Lord's kit from Age of Sigmar Warcry. We're just going to use from the hilt upwards uh, and make it into a curved power blade. I've grabbed this rather awesome looking top knot uh, that's come from, I think that's a Wrathmonger's kit from Age of Sigmar. I've got some extra Space Wolf and bits from the White Scars uh, upgrade kit uh, just to add some furs on. The only odd, odd piece here is obviously a bit of Mechanicus. Uh, I just want to borrow a little bit of the back to make that into a power sword. So let's take it away. First up, build your Assault Intercessor. Um, the main body and this arm can essentially just go together and on a base really nice and quickly. While waiting for that to dry, I'm going to sort this power sword and arm out. First job I'm going to do is take the shoulder pad off so I can swap it in for a chapter specific one. As usual, grab a pair of clippers, flip it over and just follow around the shape of the shoulder pad uh, around his arm. Try not to clip in too deep. Less clipping is better than too much. Once you've done a fairly rough trim down, just do a test fit of the shoulder pad and there you can see the extra bits we're going to need to clean up just to make it fit nice and neatly on there. So I'm just going to do this knife and we're just going to clean around this and make it a nice smooth surface uh, and clean up some of these bad joints here. And there as you can see the shoulder pad fits on nice and perfectly there and it's a bit clean around his gauntlet and hand. I'm now going to take off the chainsaw blade uh, we're going to leave the bottom pommel on this sword. And then we just need to clean up the top of his hand here, make sure it's nice and flat. Now this glaive comes with a rather awesome looking bit of fur down this side here. Uh, as you can see it goes over his hand a little bit. So I want to take the sword it about there. So what I'm actually going to do is cut diagonally across here. Try and keep that and then we're just going to trim back so I can trim it right nice and neat and, and get it fitted to his hand. So first job is going to be put the knife underneath and just slice away from yourself. And now we've got this bit, as you can see there, we just need to trim straight upwards and cut across. And then we'll just check the fit against his hand. Yep, it looks like, unfortunately, because of the bulkiness of the Marine's hand and the um, it's Indominus' gauntlet, you can see here, we're just never going to get that to fit. It's going to be far, to far across. So, scratch what I just said, and we're just going to cut it straight across at the hilt there, nice and flat, like that. That's going to fit on nicely. Now, this is obviously a lovely curved blade, but we want to make it into a bit more of a power blade. So I'm going to trim off these two little spikes here, and we're going to fit this little power pack here onto the back of it. And this is probably the most fiddly bit of this conversion. So we'll just trim these down. So, I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut just above it, and I'm going to cut down this way, and I'm going to cut across here, just at the bottom of it. Apologies for covering it up, but I don't want it to fire it across my study. So now we've got this little piece attached, unattached, we're going to just clean it up. So you can see there, we've managed to preserve most of the shape quite nicely. We've got to fit it onto the blade. So we're going to trim a little bit into here. So as you can see there, I've cut a channel out of the blade, just following this line here. And this will fit neatly in there now. And we'll just squeeze that up with a little bit of glue and that should hopefully re-strengthen that join again just like that and as you can see it's nice and central to the actual sword blade itself and that just gives it a bit of bulk at the bottom and makes it look a little bit more like some sort of power blade 
If you're doing this at home for an arm you're going to use on a tabletop, I'd be really tempted to pin this onto his hand. Um, I'm not going to do that because this is a display model only. Um, but I just run a one millimeter pin into the right in the center of his hand here and then just into the blade and it just would give the connection a little more strength. I'm going to get this arm stuck onto the model. So again, just stick it as it should be standard. Obviously pick whichever pose you're using. I'll drop his shoulder pad on as well, like so. And then his sword blade just gets dropped on the top of the hand there. So I think we've managed to make a pretty convincing Mongol style uh, cavalry saber type blade from that Warmer Warcry set. So next we'll do some work on his head and we'll start adding some extra details to the model. So we'll simply add this to the top of the existing marine helmet. I really like these helmets, I think they look pretty cool. Um, we're going to add it with a bit of swish going backwards and following the direction that the assault intercessor is heading in. So for this, just click, cut straight as close to the skull as possible, nice and gently. And then once you've cut it off, I've made a bit of a hash of that one, we just need to level this off so it's nice and flat. And then just a little dab of glue on his head. Like so. Right, next up, I'm going to give him a bit of a wolf pelt just between his legs. So obviously we're going to have to remove that. I hadn't thought of that before. I'm just going to clip it off here. And then we're going to take the wolf pelt straight across the belt line there and we'll just drop it in and we might have to do a little bit of green stuffing to make it fit. So to get this off, we're going to make a nice clean cut at the level of the belt, just like so. And then test fit it on the model. So you see where it wants to go. We need to trim it around his belt. It's not going to sit much lower than that. As you trim, just test fit it every now and again to see how your fit is going. I've got that pretty much central. I'm going to have to take a little bit off here. Looking at that now. That looks to be a relatively solid fit there. So we'll just drop some glue on and get it glued into position. So he's starting to come along nicely and we're going to add a few more bits to him. So to hide some of this join here, we're going to add the little white scar symbol. And uh, I presume that's some sort of horsehair. We'll just add that over the belt here. And finally, we'll just add a wolf pelt down the bottom of his backpack, just there. So I think we'll call this guy finished there. If you hang around for a moment, there's a painted version of him coming up right now. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care and we'll see you next time.